In your translation, did you translate the phrase great reports twice? No, who would? Most of us didn't know. We said, well, in that case, I think the text is defective, and we're going to fix it up a bit, because, well, probably the client wants it uh, to be functional and not to be a philological account of how badly the source text was written. We could imagine a situation in which you should be very literal, but most purposes, Scopus, Scopoi, if you want, uh, we would require an improvement here. Normal. Now, you have, naturally speaking, two words without a space between them. Who put a space between those two words? You're lying. Somebody did. Who put, yes, thank you for being honest. Who, uh, yes, three people, they're all men. This is statistically significant. They've, they've got the courage to put that space in where it should be. Okay. Why not put the space in? Because, yes? It, it looks like a brand name, so we make the hypothesis looks like brand name, therefore not a mistake. Okay. Now, are we sure that create reports is a mistake and, naturally speaking, is not a mistake? Who Googled it to check? Nobody. Who phoned the client to say, hey, is, are you really write your brand name like that? Actually, you don't write it again. Who's you? <laughs> Amazon. The great god of Amazon in the sky says, Thou shalt not put a space between that and his feet. Please check the product, Dragon Naturally Speaking, in the, in the company page and let me know, okay? Um, first point, we're guessing. Don't tell anybody outside of the translation profession. That's in the kitchen, you and me, it's a big secret. We're guessing. You're going to have to make decisions like this all the time, and these decisions will always be underdetermined. It will not be a clear right or wrong. You're going to have to place your bets, make a choice, and hope it's a good one. Okay? Will be right or wrong? Amazon was wrong. Hooray! Okay. And often placing your bets means trusting the authority you refer to. We refer to Amazon. It's worth a bet, but I wouldn't put a lot of money on it. Go to the company itself. Hmm, bet more money on that one. And you did well. And the gentleman who didn't, well, you could have sold that one very easily. Here's a tricky problem. For people who worked into German, that's no trouble at all. Welcome is willkommen. Yeah, and it works the same, and it's masculine, it's an infinitive, whatever, yeah. People who worked into Romance languages, where's my French man up there? What did you have? Well, I can do it in German. How do you spell that, please? Aha. Aha. But it's an application which is you got you, you got the right answer for the wrong reason, but well done. la <laughs> bienvenue. <laughs> in French, it's invariant. And oh, in the Barcelona Olympic Games, I worked on the Olympia, the four-year period before the Olympic Games. So all the translations were done. Everything's ready. People are coming into Catalonia to go to Barcelona. All the banners are put up, all the towns and cities across Catalonia saying, I'll say, bienvenidos, bienvenidos, welcome, welcome, I don't think so, anyway, and, and bienvenido, U.S. Because in, in Spanish it's plural, so in French it should be plural too. And then they realized after everything had been printed, it's feminine. So we had to go around Catalonia, sticking an E over the S <laughs> on every time of city. <laughs> very, very basic trap for beginners. Um, other Romance languages. We had Spanish somewhere? 
Yes, what did you put? Singular, not plural. Okay. Do they also feel masculine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, singular, it could be a plural in, in Spanish. The same in Italian, with my Italian people. Benvenuti. Plural, not singular. Why plural? Surely this question, for the Romance languages, you do have to decide between the plural, the singular, masculine, and feminine. And, and the, the masculine traditionally dominates. You may or may not want to fight against that. That's up to you. But surely the choice depends on where this text is going to be used. All right? If it's a big speech, somebody's presenting the new product, then it would be plural. You know, I say willkommen, I mean to all of you. All right? But if it's a text that's in the software, or somebody's bought the product and they open it up, singular. So I think you're right, but again, for the wrong reasons, or for strange reasons. Okay. All right. Any other problems with that? It's associated with an even trickier thing. This one. English just has you used to have thou as the intimate second person, and the you was the formal. So the intimate disappeared. Uh, what about into German? Is it sie and du? Sie. Why? What about if we're, we're on iTunes selling music? Is it sie or du? Do you buy it, music on iTunes? No, you don't. Nobody buys anything anymore, do they? Or what about, I don't know. You could translate it also in German with man. Yes, and avoid the problem. Nice. Sidestepping. Yeah. In, in Spanish, what was it? No, no, it's got to be singular, but is it the, um, is it tu usted? Tu puedes. Ah, what about French? Oh, you didn't do French. What would you do in French? Vous, yeah. So it's the formal in French, it's the intimate in Spanish, it's formal in German for everybody. Yeah, okay. Slavic languages? Russian, formal? All right. Okay, it's a tricky thing. Um, I remember going to an Apple website and on the one page you had one column and they're using in Spanish usted and in the next one tu. We figured that it depends on the product and the age of the buyer of the product. Like if this product costs more than 200 euros, usted. <laughs> <laughs> If it's popular music or something, tu. And they're smart. I mean, they're thinking about the linguistic choices in very functional terms. Okay, now you thought... You thought the reason you didn't translate and why you stopped was you thought this was the hard bit. That's not the hard bit. You can get those terms, find each one in a dictionary, string them together in any logical way, and that's it. Okay? It's, it's, a, it's a, a, a noun stack that English has. It's horrible. German's even worse for noun stacks. But you can always unpack them. You don't have to be a great translator for that. You just have to do a bit of terminology to tell the truth. Yeah, it's not a big problem. I mean, you, you get used to that. And when, when you're doing this over and over, you handle those problems pretty well. The other problems, though, the uh, problems of uh, how to address the person. Where is this text going? How is it going to function? Those are hard problems because there are no rules. 
You're going to have to guess, you're going to have to decide, and you place your bets, as I said. And placing those bets is a very hard thing because you can't just consult a, a, a style sheet or a, um, an authority. Well, you can be your client, but you don't go to your client with, hey, I tried these three sentences and I have 20 questions. <laughs> you just lost your client. Who translated Canada as Canada? Who did not translate Canada as Canada? I love that. That's beautiful. Ah, oh, get, get an instant pass. You can go. Don't have to do the exam. All right. Uh, what, what languages are mainly... What are the main languages in Canada? French and English. You've got a product to sell in the language you translated into, right? German, Filipino, Russian, whatever, Italian. So your reader is going to get the product and your text and think, hey, I've got the version that works for Canada, but I bought the one for Italian. Give it back. I mean, take it back to the shop. Give me the real one. Okay, did it occur to anybody, well, that man it did occur to him, perhaps something like that, that there's an apparent, not contradiction, but disturbing element in the relationship with Canada and Russian, Italian, German? Yes. Yeah, North America, you, I mean, yeah, US, international capitalism, cultural hegemony, all that. If it's in the US, it's good, therefore we should keep that value. I would consider North America as a possible you know, market-effective solution. Personally, when I had this text to translate, I didn't know what to do. So here's another secret. Don't tell anybody outside of here. Okay? You know, first secret was, we're guessing. Okay? Second one is, it's what they tell surgeons. You know surgeons, the people who cut you open at the hospital? If in doubt, leave it out. And I add for translation students, or generalize. Okay, it's one of the cheap tricks of translators when they're stuck and interpreters all the time. I can't do this here, so I'll omit it, because who cares? Or I'll generalize it, so well, I won't be wrong. I won't be 100% right, but I won't be wrong. So generalizing would be North American, very good, or the most prestigious, or I think I'd put internationally prestigious. And hey, that's enough. At least I'm not misleading anybody. I avoided one error, I got the value of the market, and let's proceed. In about two minutes, you have to make all those decisions. You can't check everything, you can't Google it, you can't phone your client. You're making translation decisions on the basis of some kind of risk management, I think. Okay. Not on the basis of rules.